Now remarks by Afghanistan's ambassador to the U.S. on his country's future. He addresses an audience at the National Press Club in Washington. This is... Good afternoon. I would like to thank uh, the National Press Club Newsmaker Committee for inviting me to address this forum. And I'm truly delighted to be here. I was looking forward to this. I will speak about Afghanistan's strategy for the future with a primary focus on security, narcotics, and NATO expansion, because I think these are the questions that are current right now in the mind of everyone. Um, historically, Afghanistan has been the center stage when major regional and global changes have taken place. If we look back from the conquest of the Alexander the Great to the emergence of the Afghan Empire from Cold War up to today, Afghanistan has somehow managed to play an important role when major changes in the region have taken place. And uh, Afghanistan is also a land bridge connecting South Asia with Central Asia and China all the way to Europe. And historically, this role has been significant for us. And today, Afghanistan is once again playing his historic role, his historic role of connecting people cultures and civilizations. For instance, 36 countries are, are having troops in Afghanistan. 41 countries are helping us train our national army and 60 countries have assisting Afghanistan in the reconstruction process. Just allow me to give you a brief description of what has taken place in Afghanistan in the past four years before I focus on security in narcotics. In the past four years in Afghanistan, we have established all key institutions of building a civil society and a democratic government in Afghanistan, including constitutional design, parliament, human rights commission, electoral system, national army, national police force, political party, as well as mechanism for political reintegration, women empowerment, and disarmament of militias. We have experienced a double-digit growth in the past four years and made considerable progress in reconnecting the country by building roads and telecommunication systems. Afghans today enjoy more political and social rights that, than any time in the history of Afghanistan. Free press is flourishing in Afghanistan. 68% of eligible voters participated in the presidential election in Afghanistan. And when in a poor country like Afghanistan, where the middle class is small, when a significant number of Afghans who are devoted Muslim participate in the electoral process and lined up to choose their president or their member of their parliament, they not only show their commitment for democracy in Afghanistan, but also sends a very strong message to terrorists and extremists all over the world. Three point six million refugees have returned to their home in Afghanistan, and six million children are going back to school. The state of the Afghanistan is young and less experienced. But the fact is that Afghanistan is truly a strong nation with rich culture and history. What we need is to build the national institutions in Afghanistan. What we need to do is to build the state institutions in Afghanistan. Two weeks ago, our parliament approved the list of the cabinet that was submitted by President Karzai, and they've approved 22 out of 27 nominees. And the approval and the rejection of the ministers was poorly based on merit and the past performance of the ministers. There were a lot of speculation that the parliament might be divided along ethnic or factional line, but that vote proved that, that this is not the fact, that the parliament now in Afghanistan is an important institution to further strengthen the state building process in Afghanistan. Just a reminder about the donor conference in London where more than 60 countries 
pledged over $10.5 billion for rebuilding Afghanistan in the next five years. That shows once again the partnership of the Afghan people with the international community. In London, we have presented Afghanistan National Development Strategy and launched the Afghanistan Compact, which is our future strategy or the blueprint of our future strategy for rebuilding Afghanistan. The, the Afghanistan Compact has very specific, quantitative, and time-bound benchmark for rebuilding Afghanistan and uh, also indicates the, 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 the partnership that's been created between Afghan people and the international community. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I did talk briefly about some of our achievements, but we are also realistic about the challenges that we are facing. We are facing some serious challenges in Afghanistan. Despite the incredible progress made in Afghanistan, we are still the sixth poorest country in the world. Only 6% of Afghan has access to electricity. 23% of Afghan has access to safe drinkable water. Narcotics and terrorism are among the most serious challenges that we are facing. They are connected and part of the same problem. The proceeds of narcotics feed into terrorism. And the terrorists provide protection for narco traffickers. We know, for instance, for fact, that now in some of the provinces, such as Elman and Orozgan, Taliban are collecting or trying to collect a 10% tax or usher on, uh, on opium which is paid in, in kind in opium by the grower and trafficker to the Taliban. Narcotics is key threat to Afghanistan's stability. And some recent news story have hinted to a possible link of some of the Afghan government officials with uh, trafficking or uh, narco traffickers. Let me make one point very clear. If we are provided with credible evidence we will act very swiftly. We have changed the governor of the three problematic provinces in Zabul, Helmand, and Orozgan. And uh, we have established, with the support of the international community, the Afghan Counter Narcotics Police Force, and as well as the Central Narcotics Tribunal to prosecute narco traffickers. 